Today on the Believer's Voice of Victory, Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis bring a message on being imitators of God. When you plant the word deep in your spirit, you'll be able to recognize the lies of the enemy. Now, here's Kenneth. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Praise God. It's a good thing. The body of Christ, the people of God have a voice. Amen. And it, we got something to say. Jesus. Yes, indeed. And it's the voice of victory. Hallelujah. It's what Jesus said. Amen. The words that I speak unto you are not my own. It's the Father that dwells within me. He does the work. Oh, Lord. And the angels hearken to the yes. voice of the Word. Amen. And we it. <laughs> ah, glory That's to good God. preaching right there. <laughs> Every born again believer has got something to say. Yes, if indeed. They say it in the Word of God. Amen. Hey, 25 days of December. We've got, now, we've all, already gone by two days now. That's right. But all the way to Christmas, a free download. Amen. A new gift, free download every day. That's a blessing. KCM.org. Now, these are, these are not trinkets now. This is this KCM product. We deal in the Word of God. Amen. And you'll be glad you did. Just go down there, have yourself a good time. <laughs> Praise God. Every day from now to Christmas, we want to sow this into your life. Amen. And those of you that are just now beginning in the Word of God, whoo, this is a good time for you because by the time you get this done, by the time Christmas comes, yeah, uh, you're going to be chewing nails and drinking <laughs> gunpowder soup, brother. <laughs> hey, God, man. It'll make you strong. Yes, sir. I believe Father, it. we thank you for the word today, Amen. and we give you the praise and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Welcome, brother Jesse. Thank you, sir. It's good Let, to be here. Let's get back over there in oh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. For you that are just tuning in, we've been dealing with living off the top of the barrel, not only in the spiritual side of your life, but the physical side, the financial side, every area. If Jesus said, be you therefore imitators of me as dear children, then you got to know what you're imitating. And you have to imitate him in every area. You know, it's one of the most wonderful things. I had this the other day. I, I did something. I didn't even know I had done it. And uh, 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 I have only have two aunts living. Uh, and they said, you know, your grandpa did that. Now, my grandpa went home to be, be with the Lord in the 60s, 1960s. He said, and he's still in me. I did something that he did. It was just that. And they said, boy, you just imitated your grandfather. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I knew my grandfather very well. I really loved him. He went home to be the Lord when I was 11 years old. And uh, today I'm a little, anyway, that's how old I am. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I want to imitate God in every area of my life. If God said I can have it, I want it. And living off the top of the barrel, we talked about yesterday before we read Genesis 13, that to, uh, to live off the top of the barrel, you must establish in yourself that God can't lie. And without sounding prideful or arrogant, I have done that in my life. I made it my mind. I made this Bible the very centerpiece of who I am. Final authority. Final authority. And in other words, my daughter asked me, Dad, how come it seems like things work for you so easy? I said, Jody, it's not that it's easy. I just create my world and then I walk in it. I create what I say. See, because what you say is what you have is at the bottom of the barrel, but what you want is at the top of the barrel. Jesse, that, that what I hear when you say bottom of the barrel, mm -hmm. that's paycheck to paycheck. Yes, sir. There ain't nothing ever there. Right. And you just, that expression is talking about just living from hand to mouth, day yes, after day, always on the verge of disaster, yes, needing a miracle. That's right. I mean, it just, and, and that, that's not God's lifestyle. No, that's indeed. not the way he designed it. Well, if you look at the book of Genesis, I mean, everything was taken care of. Everything from the, uh, spiritually, physically, financially. Not only was God walking in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve, which is phenomenal, but I mean, all the things, everything, it was in a physical, spiritual, and financial way. Now, that way. was God's will for all men for all, all the time. All the time. He has not changed. No, he never changed. And he, uh, to me, I had a man ask me one time, what's the will of God for me, or what's the will of God for mankind? And I said, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, and the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. Now, between them four chapters, Brother uh, Copeland, is 1,189 chapters of killing, stealing, and destroying by an arch enemy called Satan. But Jesus is coming back. And we're going back to Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. And we're going to go back to walking in the cool of the day with the Lord in every area of our life. 
Now, when God told me to minister this, to live off the top of the barrel, I had to believe his word. So the person, I can't make you believe anything unless I believe it. See, what people seem to, you can't convince anybody to do something unless you already convinced yourself. And I find a lot of time our biggest problem in life is not someone else, it's us. You know, people say, well, I, I, I tried that healing stuff, it didn't work. That's the problem, you tried it. God never told you to try healing. He said, be a doer, do something about that. And I begin to make up my mind that everything takes discipline, dedication, and commitment to do what God wants. Particularly I am, if you're going to change something. If you're going to change something. All change. Right. It, it takes effort. That's right. It, you start off, it takes the Word. Mm -hmm. It takes prayer. Yes, sir. Which takes faith, mm -hmm. which takes effort. It takes time. Yes, sir. And it takes money. Yes, everybody. I don't, I, I don't care what you're going to change. Well, you live in an economic world. I feel like the Lord to say this. Don't be afraid of money. Money not a bad thing. It's the love of money that is. Because you live in an economic and covetousness. world. That, yeah, that, you that's covet the problem. The, that's the whole key. The reason why, and I believe, Brother Cope, I've been knowing you for many years, and I can say it. Well, the reason why we want you blessed is not just so you can live better. Not so you can have some more stuff. Because I don't care what you got. A new car, new house, new clothes. It's all going to get old. You understand? That's not the issue. It's to be able to control your destiny and your destination here. And... Right. Do what God tells you to do about somebody else. That's right. See, the whole kid, Brother Copeland, without sounding proud, I'm not working for myself anymore. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Now, no, years ago no. I did, but not anymore. I'm not working anymore. out for other people. I, I'll just say, no, I feel that the Lord said it, but say it on worldwide television. But I was preaching. Now, this stuff living off the top of the barrel. I was about ready to turn. I very seldom preach at my home church. I, I, I'm the founder of the church, but not the pastor of it. Well, watch this. So I'm about ready. I, I, I am. 35 seconds away from turning the service over to pastor. This is on a Sunday morning. And I look across and I see a friend of mine uh, uh, that comes to our church, him and his, his wife. His name is Travis and Angie. And, and, uh, and I just smiled and, and I thought, and all of a sudden, I'm about ready, I'm about ready to turn it over to pastor and out comes my mouth, Travis, come here. So I'm thinking the Lord wants to give him word. Now, you know, you've given words and knowledge. Sometimes you don't know what's what, what God's going to say until that person stands up. The first word you. comes out. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, it just goes. Yeah, well, yeah. to make a long story short, he comes up. What I did not know he was doing was he was saying, God, Brother Jesse preaches, believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible because it's doable. He said, I want my house paid off this year. Now watch, I'm still preaching. See? I don't know that. I don't know, any, I don't know anything about his house. And all of a sudden he changes it because according to your faith, so be it. He says, no, Lord, I want my house to be paid off this month. When he said month, I went, Travis, come up here. I come up. He, he was praying that then. Yes, right then. I know, now, I don't know any of this. I don't know what I'm going to say to this man. I just, you know, what as the Lord directs me. I get there and the Lord says, pay off his house. I said, okay. I didn't know how much he owed on the house. That ain't none of my business. My business is obedience. You see, once you walk by faith, then you got to go over into the flesh side and take your flesh side and push it into that faith that if you're willing and obedient, willing obedient to what? Willing obedient to that faith of what God is saying to do. I said, Travis, I'm going to pay your house off. Well, the church went crazy. I mean, they went nuts, going nuts, and they were all crying and everything. In fact, Pastor got up and said, this is like the book of Acts. You hear people, yeah. talk, <laughs> you hear people talk about this, but it doesn't happen. So I said, Angie, call your mortgage company tomorrow. Let us know. We'll pay your house off. By 10 o'clock the next day, which is Monday, the house was paid off. Now, they were going to tell everybody I did that. I said, no, I, I didn't want to say it on there, but the Lord quickened me to say that. So they put a big sign out there. They said, Jesus paid off this house. Now, watch this, Brother Copeland. This is called living off the top of the barrel. See, you just said it. So you could do things for others. That's right. See, my house... That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Yes. See, I've been debt-free since 1982. I learned that from you. Because when you said that under the anointing of God, that hit me right between the eyes. It crossed my eyes. I went, whoa. Whoa, <laughs> did mine too when I found I mean, I life. literally rocked back in a van. I, I, I was shocked. But that was the beginning of living off the top of the barrel. You see, that was my beginning. My genesis of faith went right there. And so I was able to do that. Now, that's been... A few months back, because this is December, that would have been, I believe it was August. Make a long story short. Brother Copeland, God is my witness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the testimony. I didn't do nothing. I didn't even have time on that seed that I sowed. Paid the house off. Brother Copeland, I have received back without doing nothing. 
I'm not going. I'm not talking about an investment. I'm not talking about you know go invest something and get nothing. I received back five times the amount of money to that man's house that I paid off. Praise God. And the man. Lord said, and I ain't finished yet. And I thought to myself, well, what I'm going to do with it? Ah, listen to what I just said. What I'm gonna, see, when you learn to live off the top of the barrel, you learn to be a blessing to others. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm noticing something. You, I've learned this from you. The minute you make this man your source or you make this man your source, God ties our hands. Oh, yeah. He can, oh, you cannot, oh, yeah. You cannot do it. He must That's right. be the source. But notice this. It happened when he said, no, Lord. And the Lord said, according to his faith. All you had to do was be a willing and obedient. That's right. So I realized when God, you said something to me that's really been percolating and it's it been going over. You said, well, God doesn't tell you to do something. That he had no, he's already given you the faith to do it. Now, what you have to do is go over to your physical side and push that over into the face side by being willing and obedient. The book of Isaiah, that you eat the good of the land where you're willing and obedient. Which brings me to this point. You must embrace to others what you have established in yourself. If you want to live off the top of the barrel, you have to embrace to others. This is just not for you. The, the gospel's for everybody all the way across the spectrum. When you begin to preach prosperity, it was for everyone that would receive it. Yeah, right. Because if, why would God have you blessed and me blessed and you not blessed? That would make him a respecter of person. He is a respecter of faith, but not the, a respecter of the, person. The blessing has already been released. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we're in the process of receiving it. Right. Now, notice what I did. Mm -hmm. I did this. The whole world is raised to reach outside to get it. Yes, sir. And it's already in here. Yes, sir. So, when you go to the Word, the Word comes out, mm. and the, by the increase of our lips, we prosper. Right. Now, w once, once we hear from God and we speak what we hear Him say, we go to His Word, we speak like Jesus, it is written. Yes, sir. And you, you inquire of Him. He will lead you to those words. He will tell you, you don't just throw the Bible over. Right. You, he will lead you right. to those words. And you begin to say those words and you don't say anything else. And as you begin to say that, it's the Father that dwells within. He does the works, yes. and there it comes. And it's, it's just that simple, because you didn't complicate We're it. We're inside out people. Yes, sir. You, you heard what Jesus said, I only say what my Father says, and I only do what my Father tells me to do. That's like a child. That's no complication of that. Faith, children don't complicate faith. I am not going to, you taught me how not to complicate faith. Every, and I don't mean this, the, the pat you on the back, the Bible says give honor to what honors do. Before I got involved with you and your ministry, you and Gloria and your ministry, everybody I knew talking about faith, it was a complication. Now, you know, God said you can do this, but don't expect it. Well, why tell me? <laughs> why Keep tell it to me? yourself, you ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but you, you just simply said, if God said it, it's done. Now, some people got real mad at you years and years ago, you would say, but what you did was you wasn't complicating something that it's not complicated. You just say it and then you believe it and then you do it. Now, I know that sounds easy. It is. That's the whole key to it. That's the whole thing. You have to embrace to others what the you have established easier yourself. than the natural. Well, here's the problem. You got to move beyond your theology. My theology growing up was this, that I learned by tribulation instead of revelation. Because if it wasn't hurting and it, and, and it wasn't bad, <laughs> it wasn't God. Isn't that sad? That's yeah. sad, but the church has preached that. And, and when you realize something marvelously happened this year in the Kenneth Copeland Ministries, when the bridge was built, it blessed me, it touches me when I think about it. When God used the wonderful man who's now in heaven, who built a bridge, watch this, since the 1400s, the 1500s? 1650s. Something I, hadn't happened. And all of a sudden, we had a minister's conference, and Pope Francis sends you a message and does it on the phone through a wonderful man named Tony Palmer. 
I mean, I don't know if people understand the magnitude of what happened no, here. But no, uh-uh. it, it, it it's is, just now dawning on us. Uh, well, you know what I got? I, I never told you this. I'll say it on television. I got back home and said, I got a guy called me and said, are you and Brother Copeland, y'all, y'all, y'all becoming Catholic? I said, what? He said, Yo, I said, first thing, I remember what, what you, Francis told you. He said, I'm not asking people to be Catholic. All I want people to be is be in unity, yeah. the unity of the Spirit. Yeah. See, we, have, we don't understand unity. We understand uniformity. There's a difference. There is a vast difference between uniformity and unity. So to live off the top it's of the It's the unity family, of the faith, yes, sir. not doctrine. Right. We have to come together. Yeah. You see, now I realize every time I've ever come together on something in an investment, I didn't know all of the investment, but the person that the other partner knew something that I didn't know. I knew something he didn't know. But if we got together and we talked about this and implemented to uh, establish in each other what we have established in ourselves, we were a success going somewhere to succeed. Now, I got to say this. Embrace means you must move beyond your theology. Brother Copeland, before I was born again, the only two preachers I ever heard in my life was the Pope and Billy Graham. That's the only two I ever knew about. And when I got born again, I got into a situation of complicated faith. In other words, the more you struggle, the closer you are to God. When I first heard of you, somebody gave me that message, and you said I could, when you put out your book, The Laws of Prosperity, the, the thing that struck me was not the word prosperity. The thing that struck me, I don't mean it's private. I'm a thinker. The laws. Yeah, that's what that was the part that got hold of me. <laughs> yes. First thing. Yes. First thing, these things are governed by law. Laws. You do it, it works. Right. Man. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. You see, but most people just sort of prosperity. Stuff. Forget mm. that, man. It's like the law of gravity. I don't believe in that. Jump off the house, you're going to break your leg because the law is going <laughs> to, you don't do that. And I thought, I need to learn, not just so I could get something like a watch or whatever. The laws of it, because if I understand the laws of it, then I can make it happen at any given time. You know what true prosperity is? What's that? True prosperity. To prosper, mm -hmm. the, the, it means to excel in something desired. Right. True prosperity is the ability <clears throat> to walk in the anointing and to walk by faith in God mm -hmm. and have every need met in abundance by His anointing and power. That's power. That's true prosperity. You gave me a prophecy that I'm still talking about in 1994 at the Southwest Believers I Convention. I remember it. <laughs> I mean, Brother Cohen blew my socks off. And I'll tell you what, I had some tall socks, but he blew them. He, you said, Jesse, come up here. So, okay, I just walked up there and you looked at me and put your hand like this. I don't even know if they have it on film or not. You said, Jesse, by the time December 31st or January 1, 1995 comes, you are going to have to pray new prayers and dream new dreams because everything you're believing for is going to come to pass. I'm going to tell you what I thought of. I thought to myself, well, God better get in a big hurry because I wanted, I was believing God. I needed an aircraft. You understand? I wanted to open up foreign offices. Now, that takes all kind of money to do this. Aircraft, Foreign offices, air, those, just, just some of those things. I wanted to go on world, watch this, on secular television. Then I was only on Christian television. Yeah. And you just said, and I said, I received it. It went inside me and I said, I receive it. God is my witness, ladies and gentlemen. Every first of the year, January 1, me and Kathy, we take Holy Communion in our formal dining room. We set it up. I mean, we, and because it's the first day of the year, we just thank God for what he's did, what he's going to do. Brother Copeland, come January 1, 1995, I had the jet, I had the offices running, I had everything, all secular television, I was on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, PBS, uh, name of uh, all the Christian satellites. I said, and it, I remember your words, I said, I don't know what to pray. I didn't have a thing to pray. That prophecy came to pass, so phenomenal. It brought me to the top of the barrel, standing mm -hmm. on the top of the mm -hmm. rim, Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I've got to dream a new dream. Because remember, you said, you're going to have to dream. You're going to, now, that stretch. That, that stretched me. No, it, and if you'd have told me, there's no way I could do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not, I'm not that good. I, there was no way I could produce that much. But the prophet of God who listened to the God spoke the word. I took the genesis of faith of hearing it, received it. 
And then I went home and said, now, what do you want me to do? Because I'm part of this prophecy. Now, there you are. You obeyed God, did what he said do. Right. And that's what he's asking you to do. That's exactly the truth. And ladies and gentlemen, it was the... He did the, the great, work. He did the he work. He did the work. I'll show you how you are about the Word of God. You are a stickler for the Word of God. Most people would have never done what you had done at the Eagle Mountain Motorcycle Rally on the last one we preached. Ladies and gentlemen, there were 50,000 people in that field out there. They had campus, motorcycles. He, Brother Colton comes up to me. I was preaching this Saturday night. And, and Brother Colton said, Jesse, I want to talk to you. And just, I, I, I am two minutes away from the platform. And you say, this is the last one. I went to them, I said, you, what, 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 no, you, don't, you got 50,000 people in the field. And you said this. I can, I can verbatim. Jesus is the Lord high priest of this ministry. And God says, stop, this, this is my last one. Now, most people would have never done that because you didn't build this thing up to everybody. It seemed like everybody in the world was coming to it. Yeah, we started with 500. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. And what happened was, but I, I thought of St. John 15, that he cut the branch so that it bear more fruit. Yeah. You had fruit all over that field out there. But all of a sudden, God clipped the thing, and now you see all these wonderful motorcycle ministries all over, I mean, touching people all over the world. But because of obedience, you brought them to the top of the barrel. Praise God. And that's the power. That's what we're talking about today. You, it went, you went beyond your theology by speaking that word. And we're out of time. And we're out of time. Brother Jesse, and I'll be back in just a minute. For 35 years, the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast has taught people how to walk in faith every day through the power of God's Word. The BBOV airs in English, German, Russian, Spanish, and Ukrainian, providing more than 885 million people access to the on-air broadcast. Viewers can watch when and where it's most convenient with on-demand access through our website and the dedicated KCM Roku channel. Roku connects you to the BBOB broadcast anytime you need it. Watch archived broadcasts, healing school, and much more 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Far too many Christians are living way below their kingdom privileges. They are lacking peace and never experiencing the abundant life that God has created for them. Introducing the Living Off the Top of the Barrel Package. In it, you'll find the wisdom you need to begin looking up away from your circumstances to God, your provider. Jesse Duplantis' Living Off the Top of the Barrel two-part DVD series allows ample time to go more in-depth on this topic. You can begin to adopt a new mindset from poverty to blessing. In For Buy It, Faith, his latest book, learn what it is. For Buy It, you have access to God's best in every area of your life. Also included is the book Prosperity, The Choice is Yours by Kenneth Copeland. God desires your prosperity. The choice to prosper belongs to you. Don't settle for just enough when God wants you, like Abram, very rich, and not just for yourself, but so you can rise up and be the blessing you were born to be. Discover how to ignite your faith and step into an abundant life. Order the Living Off the Top of the Barrel package for only $35.69 at a special savings of 30%. Log on to kcm.org slash TV special or call toll free 800-600-7395 and request your package today. Understand that the choice to prosper belongs to the believer. For an additional 10% off, order the Living Off the Top of the Barrel package online. Now, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, God sent you to this broadcast today. He sent you right here in our kitchen so that you could right here at our table Amen. receive Jesus, get born again, and walk in the same thing that we're walking Amen. in. The, this is for the blessed. Yes. Sir. And the blessings for everybody. Amen. But it has to be received. Right. That's, amen. Now, this is from the book of Romans. If you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That word saved means to be made sound in every part of your life. Amen. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 
I like that. Then the 13th verse, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. Whosoever. I remember when I found out I was a whosoever. <laughs> yes, Glory to God. <laughs> that God died for the ungodly. And I thought, whoa, that's me. That's right. I, thank me God. Me too. Yes, sir. See, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, you and I are part of this world. And so we qualify. Yes, indeed. Now, I want you to pray it out loud where you can hear it in your own ears. I'm going to lead you. You pray when Brother Jesse prays. Yes. Oh God in heaven. Oh God in heaven. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. Jesus has been raised from the dead. Jesus has been raised from the dead. For me. For me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive you, sir, as my Lord and my Savior. I receive you, sir, as my Lord and my Savior. I repent of sin. I repent of sin. I renounce the past. I renounce the past. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit. You promised you would in your word. You promised you would in your word. I receive it. I receive it. I fully expect. I fully expect. My supernatural prayer language. My supernatural prayer language. Just like on the day of Pentecost. Just like on the day of Pentecost. In the book of Acts. In the book of Acts. I receive it. I receive it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Now, if you prayed that with Brother Jesse and me, let us know. I want to send you this little book, free and postpaid. This will help you get started reading your Bible. Amen. You don't need to be struggling with this. And you won't. That's right. And I'll tell you how simple it is to learn how. That little, that little brochure right there will show you how to read Amen. your Bible. <laughs> and this right here will show you what's happened to you. For, we want to bless you with it. Glory to God. We'll see you tomorrow. Till then, this is Kenneth and Jesse reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Learn who you are in Christ and how to begin your new life in victory. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org salvation. Jesus did it all for you. Receive His love and experience the good life God has for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org salvation. Continue to grow in God's Word with this week's Believer's Voice of Victory, available at kcm.org for purchase, streaming, or download. Let God's grace abound toward you and live in the blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2015 Branson Victory Campaign, February 26th through 28th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2015 Southwest Believers Convention, June 29th through July 4th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2015 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 12th through 14th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. Tomorrow on The Believer's Voice of Victory. I'm not defined by my possessions. I'm you defined, not be. no, I'm defined by Christ in me, the hope of glory.